Welcome to Africa Speaks of today. My name is Stephen Malindra, and I do hope that, uh, as usual, you had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Now, what have, you, have I got in today's program? I'm very excited about it, and uh, I do hope that it's going to be a very, very, very interesting program. Um, can Nigeria remain the same after next year's elections? Is one of the questions we're going to try and answer in today's program. Okay. With less than eight months to go before Nigerians go to the polls to elect the next president, sections of the country are being mobilized to ask politicians for a breakaway from the country. This is one region of Nigeria, by the way. The last time this happened, there was a civil war that lasted for almost four years, with over four million people killed in the early 70s. Now, almost a million people have signed a petition calling for the independence of Yoruba nation. Demonstrations led by historian Professor Banji Akitoye have already taken place in Ibadan and planned for other Nigerian cities to demand a breakaway republic of Yoruba. The question is, will they succeed? What about the Igbos? Will they demand another republic of their own? These are questions we need to answer in today's program. With, the stu with me in the studio today is Mr. Paul Ade Adedei, who is the CEO of uh, uh, Dedu Magazine and Chief Organizer of the Yoruba National Rally UK. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Yeah. Now, and um, also with him is Mr. Adi Makinde, who is uh, a lecturer in the university here in London and has been on a number of our programs here. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Yeah. Now, it's, it's a quick question that is not only going to be answered by Nigerians, but has to be answered by the Africans as a whole, because it's, it's a genuine worry that is worrying us. Uh, if something that hap can happen and the Nigerian government, for example, accepts and says, okay, uh, we, they're asking for a referendum, the Igbos will want a referendum, the Yorubas will want a referendum, and maybe other uh, Nigerian tribes might want a referendum as well. And uh, couldn't this lead to a breakup of Nigeria if it does happen? And is there a possibility to happen? Um, <clears throat> in the first instance, uh, my name is Olumide, as you call it, Ode Day. Ode Day, Ode yeah. Day, yeah. yeah. And with the magazine CEO. Mm. I use, I need to collect something first. Okay. It's not five, it's not one million significant, it's five million. Five million people have signed, signed the petition. Yeah, yeah. The okay. five million have signed the petition. Okay. And they've taken it through. So mm. I need to make that correct. Okay. And the question you are asking is, uh, Come again on that question. Yeah, the question is, can it happen? Can it happen? Can they allow, can the government of Nigeria allow the Yorubas to have their own republics? Okay. It happened in the 60s, like I said, in the 70s, when the Igbos tried, there was a civil war, obviously, you know Biafra, and what happened after that? It never happened. Are we looking at this? But my, the, the main worry is: could we have something similar in the in the in the in, the, in this new century? The question you're asking about that—that's why I said you repeat yourself. Yeah, you're yeah. Talking about referendum. Yeah, yeah. Or breakaway. Yeah, yeah. We Yorubas and Biafras—they uh -huh. are asking for breakaway. Yeah, yeah. We are not asking for referendum. Yeah. You understand because it's two different things. Yeah, but it happened in Parliament. They were saying that the, the senators were saying, "Look." Uh, if it's going to happen, we need to be given a referendum. That's the first thing. So if the people of the regions decide that a petition could be done and they will listen to it, but a referendum, that's one of the uh, Professor Dekei, if I may put him right, he also said, look, it's easier. Give the people the referendum and see what the people say. They might say, no, we don't want to break away. Uh, but we asked for a referendum mm. three years ago. Okay. And the Nigerian government didn't answer us. Mm. You understand me? So that's why we say, okay, we don't want it no more. We want break up. Mm. Let them be Yoruba. Let them be Yibu. Let them be outside. Let everybody go on their way. Okay. If they still want to hold on to Nigeria, let them hold on to Nigeria. Mm. Because the Biafras are crying. Mm. The Yorubas are crying. Mm. Even though some of the Aousas too are crying. Mm. That the way they are treating us is not the way it's supposed to be. Mm. Because the Fulani have taken over everything mm. and we are just like a follower mm. and we cannot be a follower on our father's land that's why we say we know one referendum want to be break away Ade, what do you think you follow this thing all through you've seen it lived lived it 
mm. and such so as the, 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 the Civil War. Well, you, before you we go in, if I could just yeah. uh -huh. make a correction or be precise. The yeah, yeah. Nigerian Civil War lasted from 1967 to yeah. 1970. Yeah, yeah. Um, breakaways, they, are, they tend to be messy mm, and they would be violent. So, and mo most nations would not allow for a breakaway. Mm to occur. We need to be frank about that. Yeah. Uh, we have examples from Africa, we have examples from Europe and even North America. Mm. Quebec separatists, mm. currently in Europe, Catalan separatists. Yeah, yeah, you see yeah. the in, way in, they in, were... In, in Spain, yeah. They, they, they beat them on their heads and, mm. uh, you, know, uh, were, you know, they didn't actually uh, tolerate uh, the whole idea about mm. staging a referendum unilaterally. Yeah. And we know what's happening in Ethiopia. So. Mm. Um, what, what really should be on the table is, as has been called for for quite a number of years now, is a national sovereign conference to decide Nigeria's future, which okay. the first one happened in the 1960s, but the civil war overtook it and th that, that conference was supposed to persist. But I suppose after all the bloodshed and the, 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 the effort at reconstruction, no victor, no vanquished, supposedly, then um, it was put to the side table. Okay. And things like creation of states, you know, came about. But what we've seen now is um, we have a very serious situation. And anyway, the, the, the simple answer, because there's a lot of time to discuss other issues, but mm. the simple answer is um, no. So the idea is a negotiated restructuring of Nigeria or a, uh, you, know, f uh, you know, a series of referendums yeah. which will decide the, the nation's fu future. But it has to be a collective effort. Mm. And you did hint at something there uh, about the OAU's policy. Okay. Um, you didn't say it expressly, but this whole idea about if you set a precedent, mm. other people in the country, mm. other people in other parts of Africa will break up. And yeah, yeah. we want something more strategic, more systematic, okay. and ultimately beneficial to people. Yeah. So um, the whole idea is no, I, I think even in the, 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 you know, people are getting desperate. Yeah, of course. Of even course. Uh, f from the point of view of uh, Yoruba secessionists, the mm. idea would be let's do it in a legal manner if we're going to break away. But I still think that uh, if there was any chance of showing that Nigeria could be run on more equitable grounds yeah. and that um, if one side wasn't favoring the other, uh, uh, you know, favoring themselves over others, that, that Nigeria would have a chance. Now, the biggest problem we have, or Nigeria has at the moment, is that uh, there's a lot of kidnappings. There's a, the crime, crime levels have gone to the top. And this is what everybody's worried about. Now, guns are entering Nigeria very easily. And they are saying, okay, if it doesn't happen, there's a possibility of a civil war happening in Nigeria. We didn't expect this in Ethiopia, but something is happening. Now, there could be something that's blowing. We don't know at the moment. But if the answer is no, they've tried the table manners, the table issue of let's talk and let's talk and it's not working. Is there a possibility of a civil war? Are you looking at it from that angle? If nothing happens? You see, as far as we are concerned, yeah. Nigerian federal government yeah. is the one preparing for civil war. We don't want war. You don't we want, want, we don't want war. Mm -hmm. You want to do it peacefully. Mm -hmm. But when we have a government, a government that, government that opened the doors yeah. for all these super to come into the country through their own area. Yeah. For long ago, they've closed our own border mm. and they open not border for all these people to come in. Yeah. And we keep on showing them, showing them, telling them these people are coming in, these people are coming in. Nigerian government refused to close the border, they refused to attend to it. Yeah. And now they start kidnapping. Yeah, yeah. And now they start killing. Yeah, the crimes are going on. And yeah. now the Fulanis are all over Southwest. That means they are preparing for war. And we are telling them we're not ready for war. All what we want is you hold your side, we hold our side. Okay. We don't we're not calling for any war. That's how we create our rallies all over the world, all over the place. That we don't want war. We just want how to negotiate on the simple table. You go your way and let us to go on our way. Yeah, but how are you going to make sure 
that you don't want a war. But it, war. Yeah, but it comes to such an extent that you're pushed against the wall. What do you do if you're pushed against the wall? Of course you have to defend yourself. Yeah, we have, we have to defend <laughs> ourselves yeah. and we have to keep our house. Yeah. That's what we are doing. Yeah. But they keep on pushing us. Yeah. They keep on doing it to us. Yeah. But for example, when we catch them, mm. we give them back to government yeah. and they free them again. Yeah. We catch them, yeah. we give them to government, they free them. Yeah. And anybody that comes out and talk for us yeah, yeah. that this thing is not right, government go after them. Now, uh, okay, Ade, how do you see this situation now? Because it's becoming more like, okay, we are doing the right thing, but they're not doing the right thing. Our, uh, our hands are tied to the wall. Uh, Ethiopia shouldn't have had this uh, civil war in at the moment, but they were also tied. The, 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 the hands were tied in different mm -hmm. directions because I remember interviewing them there and they were saying something similar. So no, we didn't want to do this, but this happened. We didn't want to do this, but it happened. So what do you think the end results could be? Well, the, the, the total violent disintegration of Nigeria mm. is always on the cards. That yeah. would be unfortunate. Yeah. And I hope everybody is, uh, most Africans, Nigerians have a default position of being uh, in a sense, in a broad sense, pan-Africanists. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't want we don't want war. But um, the reason why I am um, very fearful that war will break out is that, see, in recent times, after the end of the civil war, the there was there, there were certain insurgencies you had in Niger Delta yeah you had um, at the time of the dictatorship of Sani Abacha you had a Yoruba group called the um, Nadeko yeah uh, uh, that's that's an acronym mm -hmm. um, th that was trying to get uh, the uh, the, the uh, chief Abiola's election victory uh, formalized yeah and uh, people were assassinated but in a sense, what happened was that um, there was a success of that resistance in the sense that the Yorubas did not want to secede, but what they wanted, uh, at the, what, what they did at the end of the day was they made uh, parts of Nigeria ungovernable. Okay. And essentially, the next ele the election that happened after the death of uh, Abacha was handed to the Yorubas because you had two candidates. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a former military head of state, uh, Olusegun Obasanjo, mm. and uh, Dr. Olu Faleye. So that, you know, but that situation is not present. Mm. At the moment. It's At the moment, present. among yeah. Yorubas and a lot of other groups. Mm. Because whether certain things may be exaggerated or not, mm. and I tend to believe that they're not totally exaggerated, Yeah. People are seeing something that uh, goes further than just marginalization. Mm. You know, next time it's going to be our turn to get to the presidency, yeah. that sort of thing. Mm. People are seeing an existential threat to their ancestral lands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is a very dangerous thing. And the Nigerian government, under former General uh, now President Buhari, mm. has been very, very lacking mm. in the way it's dealt with this. Now, there is a talk. There's a talk which I saw in one of the demonstrations which were at the embassy when I saw, and even over the weekend, I attended an Igbo ceremony that took place uh, in Enfield. And one of the things that I was being told by one of the journalists that I met there was that um, iPod, this is the Igbo uh, Namdi Kanu's group, are thinking in terms of saying, how about if we make between us and the Igbo and the Yorubas and create one major force and that idea came, but these people were thinking about it. But then the Igbos are saying, we need to talk to the elders. And if the elders agree in, in, in Igbo land, then the whole thing, the, the whole dimensions of the, the, uh, the, the fight could change the directions. Do you, both of you, do you see this happening? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> that was a quick one, yeah? <laughs> because, because. Yeah. Because uh. to be honest with to be honest to ourselves, uh. we didn't trust each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It's true. That's the other. He we was also each other. He so was just, mm. We will just be. We can ask. Be asking for the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And we get the same thing. Yeah, but we didn't the, trust each other. The the, the, the Igbo journalist was telling me the same thing. He said, "Look, um, um, uh, uh, one thing about the Yorubas is that they, the Judas, they betrayed 
they betrayed us in the in the civil war during the the the, the early 60s uh, the late 60s that's 70s. what the people the say Ibo, the Ibo, the the Yoruba, say, yeah. but they look at the yeah. Yeah. what's on the table <laughs> within ojuku and awolowo what's on yeah, the yeah. table within ojuku and awolowo is yeah. what we were talking about yeah. it's not what happened in ore yeah. they were talking about what happened in ore yeah. but they didn't say what ojuku gives to awolowo yeah. or what we are not there yeah. Yeah. but what we are doing is that uh, we have enough is enough yeah yeah we serving in our own father's country. Uh, Adi, do you see this happening? Well, I don't want to get into this sort of <laughs> intertribal <laughs> thing. I mean, uh, I'm game like anybody else at yeah. another point, but yeah. that's a very simplistic thing. Yeah. And uh, the Yorubas have their point of view of what happened. Okay. okay. As did the people from the river state of Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. And that is, a, you know, so if, if you persist with uh, stereotyping each other, yeah, well, yeah. nothing's going to get done. Yeah. You know, so we'll put that uh, to one, um, uh, you know, to, 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 to another side. And, yeah. You know, there are people who will be watching this, Africans of different persuasions. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. you know, they're invited. Go and read about this civil war. Yeah. Uh, and also about what happened about uh, wh when the Biafrans uh, declared their state. Yeah. And the man who... Uh, changed the whole dynamic. I mean, Ojuku okay. ordered uh, a Yoruba officer to invade the Midwest, and mm. it led to uh, all sorts of uh, things. So, th this idea about betrayal, um, yeah, yeah. let's 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 put that let, let's just put that to one side. But to say how, no, but very the, the, the reason why I'm talking about yeah. it is that it carries weight. It carries a certain weight because I remember another th incident which happened. Uh, I was at. Um, the Institute of Directors uh, and um, uh, um, the son of one of the um, the guy, the Ngoni guy, who did a lot of changing, who, who did a lot of campaigning and was eventually accepted. Ken Salawiwa's son was mm. uh, uh, wrote a book about his father, and he was and he was promoting the book uh, during the event. So he was talking about the book and so on. Then another Igbo Well, it's the same that, old yeah. story. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the Niger Delta people were accused of being yeah. saboteurs. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then eventually the Igbos themselves yeah. were accusing each other of being saboteurs. The yeah. people who led the military coup, mm -hmm. a, a lot of them were actually from, um, one was from Niger, uh, was a Delta area, yeah, Major yeah. Unzeogu. Yeah. Um, you had Onicha people, mm -hmm. one was Major Ifejuna. Okay. And so, and then it's the Osu people who were saboteurs. So, <laughs> again, that's one reason I don't want to get <laughs> into that. I'm not evading it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but because of the, 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 the time. So, yeah. that is not helpful because mm. if people really want to make progress and they feel that is one way mm. of putting pressure mm. on Nigeria to mm. see sense, mm. because actually the, the unity of, of those two major groups okay. in any kind of confrontation, economic, military, Mm. If they were truly united, it yeah. would, would pose a different issue with Nigeria. Mm. And so with the Yorubas deciding not to secede mm. in 1967, yeah, yeah. They, um, you know, they tipped the balance against the Igbos okay. succeeding. Okay. Now, the, now the, the main reason why I'm, uh, I'm, I'm focusing mostly on that is that we're, we're looking at a new generation. This is a new generation of Nigerians. Some of those who lived in the 70s during the, that civil are long gone. The Ujukus are gone and all the young. Now, the young men who are coming in, you're looking at uh, the iPod leader, um, uh, Namdi, Namdi, Namdi Kanu, and you're looking at that generation of Kanu. When I go to the demonstrations, when I attended the demonstrations, I see very young people in their 20s, in their 30s. This is a new generation of young Nigerians who are coming in. That's why I'm saying, look, if this is a new generation, then it's probably the other factors affecting it, the unemployment and so on and so forth, which are saying, okay, why don't we unite? And this is what Nigeria might face as we go along. That's why I'm saying, look, maybe even you as a main organizer of this, you are not looking at the youth, the Igbo youth could be a big, big impact if they are to join the movement. So that instead of only having Yoruba youth, you're having the Igbo youth, and you're also having other parts of Nigeria where they must say, you know what, if we unite as a, as a whole, because what's happening in, in, in Nigeria at the moment is that the government has failed. Mm. It's like the government has failed everybody. You see, mm. when, what you are saying, right, mm. is going to go a long way. Yeah. And it's going to be a very big confusion. Yeah. But when we go out to a rally, mm. we come together, we join together, 
come on the same platform yeah. and we are saying the same thing. Yeah. Do you understand me? But because That's both the the Igbo and, and, and Yoruba. And Yoruba. Yeah. You are all saying so the, the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We are saying the same thing. We are doing the same thing. Mm. It's just that we want you to... Ju you just can't we, unite. We can't just unite. Yeah. We want to be like Scotland yeah. and let them be like Wales. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let everybody stay on their own. And because we've oh. been Yoruba land, have been a, a nation before. Yeah, yeah. And then when we were a nation, we don't have problem. We could deal with each other. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, yeah. The problem we are having now, we can't deal with each other. Yeah. Some part of Yoruba are betraying being Nigerian side because they're getting money. Yeah, of course. Ma that was my next question. Money could be a key point as well. Yeah. It couldn't it could tint at the side where everybody goes. It happened with the council or we were it happened with the money could be a major point now. If if you have people raising it's it's happening in Ethiopia. The amount of money being raised by Ethiopians abroad is sibling the war that is going on in, 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 well, in well, Ethiopia. One, one quick point. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah just mm. very quick on my part. The, the, the issue about money, I mean, w one issue is, um, I think it happens with Yoruba and it happens with Igbo and yeah. others. Yeah. They feel their elites are being bribed. Okay. And so these people who come from the grassroots, mm -hmm. like uh, Sunday, the whole, the, those sorts of people are representing what the masses are thinking. But the people who are the elites, like the man who is now scheduled to be the uh, candidate, Bolatinu, mm -hmm. these sorts of people are not representative, even though they are of a certain group and they use their ethnicity okay. as a bargaining chip. So I don't know. Are they being bribed? Yeah, you see. There's no people, leadership. People like Tinumbu, as you said. They are the one using federal government's money. They are the one in power. People like Sunday Igbo, they are the people that believe that the people at the top, they are shitting us. They are not giving us the right thing. See what happened on the weekend in the last election they did. They paid those guys 10,000 10, naira, And those guys collect the money and they did not vote for them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they even make a fun of them. Yeah. And that's the type of the type of your bar in Nigeria you'll be seeing in our next election. Yeah. Because these people got can you imagine? Our students are home. They can't go to school. And one party can pay hundred million to buy a form. Just a form. Just a form for the, for to the be election. a candidate to the president. A and they have about hundred of them buying that that form. And our kids are at home. You can't go to school. You can't go to school because of money. Yeah, yeah. And these people you are talking about holding the money to themselves. Mm. Look at them bringing out all the parents' the food they have. Mm. That is also give them three years ago. They kept it yeah. until some of the kids went to break into the place and start bringing out the food. So, are you. You see, when we sit down here, mm. when you see us doing our rally, yeah, yeah. we don't do it because of people like Tinumbu. We want to put them aside. We want the new, new Yoruba land. Mm. Because we're tired of them. You mentioned yeah, last time we have when Abbasoja, when Abiela, mm. something, something, they brought out two Yoruba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abbasoja is not Yoruba. Yeah. Abbasoja is a Fulani. <laughs> yes. It's a Fulani. Listen, so, listen. The man is the, the man is disagree the, with that the, now. No, no, about sometimes is we are in, in listen, the same community from Owu. The, the man he is not a Yoruba <laughs> man. The he man works for the Fulani people. Listen, listen. The man himself said he's a Yoruba no. man. He said so. You see, he mm -hmm. could be we could he could be naming Yoruba name. But <laughs> everything about him, he was doing it for the Fulani people. <laughs> he's a guy that wrote for eight years. Yeah. Go and look at his state. Yeah. Go and look at his, where his farm is. Yeah, yeah. No ordinary road he can do. Yeah. And when but, um, I did you rule rule for eight years, go and look at me now. Yeah. And look at a better for his own. He's not working for us. Yeah, yeah. He's never been a Yoruba man. Yeah, yeah. He just got a Yoruba blood, a Yoruba face, <laughs> but a name is a full animal. <laughs> Thank you for your I, thought, I, th I thought you were going to refer to the, uh, the, the conspiracy theory that his father, his biological I don't want to go to that one. I don't want to go to that one. But I, I, see and I understand what you, you're saying because yeah. the, the, the military was dominated by the North yeah. after the, uh, right from the time of the counter coup of uh, uh, July 1966. Mm -hmm. um, but in recent times, Obasanjo has 
changed his tenor. Mm. And he did send out certain missives to Buhari, which was not appreciated Listen, by the Northerners. When he said, look... When he was in power, mm. why didn't you have this right to do that after he left power? When you're <laughs> in power, you have this right of doing right. all these things. You did not do it. <laughs> but when a full animal is there, you not start writing letter. What kind of writer is he writing? Yeah. <laughs> but what, is, yeah, what he did say, he, he did say that this could lead to uh, a kind of an inter ram ram way, you know, okay. like in Rwanda. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. Uh, that that was obviously a point that yeah. things will boil over mm -hmm. and people will start murdering people on mass. Yeah, yeah. So that was a dose of realism. Whether it has come too late, etc. Mm. I don't want to get into that. If but he's a Yoruba man, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's supposed to stand for us mm. and st mm. and fight for the right. Even though he's going to die on that right, <coughs> he's supposed to do it because he's one of people that bring Niger bring Yoruba or Nigeria down. Mm. Do you understand me? Right. Because when he was in power, he has so many things to sort out. He did not sort it out. Mm. Now he now left now right into uh, our um, go to the president. Mm. That was so, so, so no, 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 no. He should leave <laughs> Bari alone. He has done the wrong and he shouldn't okay. be going back so there. Anyway. You, you, okay. did, you did mention one thing there, yeah, which yeah. I think we need to develop upon. Okay. And there's one thing you mentioned about Yorubas, like mm. the prehistory. And this is an issue with the Igbos and others. You know, when people talk as if life before was a bed of roses, mm. that is not always true. Okay. You have the Yorubas in Ilori, uh, and there's an issue there mm. about how they are. In fact, when you go by Yoruba, you think of also about the Yoruba diaspora mm. <coughs> in West Africa, even Latin America, you know? Mm. But <coughs> specifically speaking, and also the Igbos. Mm. There was never any, you know, Ibo, Ibo Uku as a civilization was a living, breathing civilization. <laughs> but Biafra is quite a myth. And there was never any sort of unity and that, uh, among the Igbos. And, and in the Yoruba land as well, I mean, you had before colonialism, uh, the people in the Ondo area. They were very close to Benin. And in fact, their whole <coughs> strategy was actually geared more towards Benin. They didn't actually consider themselves part of that confluence of mm. Yorubas uh, until the colonial era. Mm. So I think we've got to be, this is one of the things that needs to be planned for, that if Nigeria is going to break up, whatever you're in the north or the south, um, it's not a guarantee that these societies yeah. that you yearn for and romanticize mm. are going to be what they are. It's yeah. about the mentality that is going to be taken into it. And okay. that's always my biggest fear, okay. that whatever the grievances are, and they are there, yeah, yeah, of, course, of course they're there. <coughs> the mm. problem is that in any reconstituted nations, you will still have the same, <coughs> the, the same nonsense kind of, yeah, yeah. of the elites, now, they, cheating the people, running neo-colonial colonies. Mm. So that's it. I mean, I, you can come in now, but mm. I think we need to develop what you were mentioning about yeah. the issue about the economy and poverty. Yeah, yeah. Because I can guarantee that, you, that, that is if, if there wasn't a, a, a barren encroaching Sahara yeah, yeah, yeah. with uh, a lot of uh, Fulanese, those Fulanese, not every Fulani is, uh, is, a, is a herdsman, mm -hmm. but the, the, the effects mm. of the ecology of the Sahara, yeah, yeah. if you had a vibrant economy, mm. most of these issues, the issues would won't, not won't be, be arising. Now, uh, I, I want us to go back to one thing which I've seen, not just in Nigeria, but in the rest of Africa. <coughs> there is something called ethnic federalism and his ethnic nationalism politics that has failed to come together. That is ethnic nationalism and ethnic, uh, uh, ethnic federalism and nationalism. Where you are, you are supporting, like what you're saying, that Obasa and you is not a Yoruba. Because if he had been a Yoruba man, he would have done what a Yoruba man would have done. Then you look at nationalism. You find there are Nigerians who are nationalistic and they are doing their level best to make sure that Nigeria remains the same and Nigeria can function. But at the same time, you've got federalism. Those who believe in their various states. Uh, I mean, I've talked to people from Anambra State to, uh, who are saying, look, as far as we are concerned, we are looking at our state. We are not looking at the rest of Nigeria. If we can develop our state, if we can do this. Now, that issue how do you bring nationalism the way maybe football brings 
everybody together as a national. The way Pan-Africanism, as we're discussing it, if we can't do that, what, uh, why has it failed in Nigeria? In, you see, in yeah. Nigeria, yeah. as you said, it's only football that brings us together. <laughs> <laughs> Anything yeah. after football, we are nothing. Nigerians. Yeah, yeah, nothing. But when we are playing football, yeah. we are one Nigeria, yeah. everybody is happy, yeah. everybody do what they have to do. Okay. You see, when you're talking about what you just said now, yeah, yeah. That's the type of person your pastor just said he is. Yeah. He said it's not a Yoruba man, yeah. that it's for all Nigeria. Yeah. But how an African man, only you cannot be for all Nigeria. When your the other people under you, mm. you look after their states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you say you want to look after Nigeria. Mm. See what is happening now. When there's a big crime in Lagos states, they will tell you, bring it to Abuja. Mm. And when you get to Abuja, no case. <laughs> yes, no case. So why is a Fulani no case? See our politicians today. Yeah. Before they give them a seat, uh -huh. they took them to Abuja. That I don't know what they're doing to each other. Uh -huh. And once they give them the seat, uh -huh. you know what they do? No. They don't listen to, to the grassroots again anymore. They listen to those who are giving them. They, they the listen seat. to the people at the top. The people in the grassroots. It's none of their business. Mm. Can you imagine? You are a senator in Lagos State, and you are living in Abuja. You are not living among your own people. You don't yeah. know where your own people are. When you want to need your vote, you come back to the, the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you see what you see how what federalism is doing to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they take everything want to be under federalism. So that they will take everything that we're not. Then people like Sunday go stand up that listen. Mm. You see what Sunday Go is doing today is somebody like Obasanjo that's going to stand up and say, listen, these people are my people. Yeah, yeah. We need to look after them. Mm. I'm here because of the people in the grassroots. Yeah, yeah. I'm not here because of the people at the top. I'm here to voice my voice to tell them that the people at the grassroots need to enjoy this nation too. Listen, I will tell you something in the 90s. I used to drive, you will know what I'm saying, from Lagos to Ibadan, under 45 minutes. Mm. But now you cannot do that anymore. Why? Because that road. Ah, okay, okay. That Ibadan to Lagos road, they've been doing it since, since I was 10 years old. <laughs> they're still doing it. I'm in my 50s now. <laughs> if I'm lying, you will, tell, you will say it. But because we have bad leaders, yeah, yeah. and some of we Yorubas, are the bad leaders that they're killing the economy of you know what they do they only give you money once they give you the money you forget about the people in the grassroots uh, we're coming back to the same angle because my my issue has always been that if if things can't work out if the solution can't be found because we discussed we can discuss the solution for since uh, the, at the end of the day but if are there other options that can happen and that people are going to leave because a voice has to be listened to and they can't listen to that voice unless it comes out in numbers you get the point if the numbers come out they will listen because at the end of the day when numbers means, coming out hmm. federal government should stop them by shooting look at the answers yeah, yeah. is that not the answers, yeah, is I that not know. one voice yeah but they, they, the but they, but they acted they acted the police units were, were immediately they you see what they did they, to them yeah, yeah. they kept them quiet yeah yeah so that they won't come out again. Yeah. They kill them. Yeah. When somebody is carrying a Nigerian flag, one Nigeria is a baby. <laughs> and the same Nigeria you are in, send them to go and shoot the person that's carrying a Nigerian flag. So why would I carry a Nigerian flag anymore? Mm. It's a simple question. Why would I carry a Nigerian flag? When a son carry a Nigerian flag, a boy of 18 years old mm. said, I'm suffering. You know the argument we have when we are in Nigeria yeah, yeah. in our 80s and 90s. Mm. We enjoy Nigeria from one part to another. We treat him Aousa like Aousa. We treat ourselves like one nation. Mm. Until these things start going wrong. Yeah. Okay. Is there a solution? What's the solution other than breakaway? Well, because from, could there be a solution I mean, other than from, breaking from, from the beginning, I mean, there, there are two things here. If we look at it in a kind of a formularic manner, we would uh -huh. say, look, call a national sovereign council mm. and also go towards uh, addressing grievances and uh, apparently basically restructuring the country mm. that's part of it okay. but the other issue is uh, bad leadership as you just mentioned yeah yeah and this is something that is chronic and you've been honest to say Yorubas are part of that mm. of course as are yeah. all Africans you can't 
you know you can't just put the blame on one particular no. section and maybe at some point because i understand the issue about the um the, the herdsmen's crisis, but I think later on, you don't have to answer it now, <coughs> I would want you to sort of um, interrogate that idea, because the, the Fulanese feel they're being de demonized, that there are a lot of them who've been settled in parts of southern Nigeria. You mentioned people coming from the outside. These may be people who've been, they've come from um, clashes between Fulanese and other groups in parts of Mali, in parts of um, Central African Republic. But is there a way that you feel uh, that you can approach this without there being this kind of stigmatization that ultimately the Fulani, as if they're a biological enemy and that they're all bad? Is there a way around that? Let me give you, let me answer that question easily for you. When these guys are coming in, they come in with the AK-45, the, the S-Man. How could you have a <coughs> S-Man with AK-45 coming from the north down to the southwest? And we have to stop them doing that or coming through people's farm. When they come, they come through people's farm, eat the crops, kill the farmers. That's why some people will come up that you should stop killing my people. And we keep on telling federal government, you and me know that in the 80s and the 90s, we have full armies in Lagos at our gate door. You know we use them as a gate man. You know they do our shoemakers. You know they do tailors. We welcome every one of them. Until this particular time, they start coming in, becoming in some area in Lagos. Can you imagine they say that? When the Fulani people are working there, they don't want nobody else to work there. And they keep on putting the Seriki all over the place in the in Southwest. What's that? The Serikis, they're kings. Mm. They call them Serikis. Mm. They keep on putting them all over the place. And our people, they're supposed to say, why are you doing this? They keep shots. They never say anything. Mm. Mm. There's a Seriki in Lagos that when he's going out, trust me, Lagos, um, above Lagos, he doesn't go his own entourage more than him. We is going like a full governor in Lagos. And we kept quiet because we accept every one of them. Mm -hmm. But now they start killing our people. That's why we start asking, why is it happening? And when we catch them, we give them to federal government. And federal government we say say we are doing the wrong thing of we catching them. Mm -hmm. we them who, who's doing the catching? Uh, the security the organization. The security or? we have some Yoruba last time, we have some um, OPC people. That cash, um, um, this guy called uh, or something, they took him there. The people that cashed him and underwent <coughs> the police was stay in a jail for more than six months mm -hmm. until we keep on shouting <laughs> that they should release them. Mm -hmm. They didn't kill them, they only cast the person that is killing our own people and underwent the federal government. And federal government said, Okay, thank you for bringing him, and you the people that bring him to follow him to jail. And we are talking about one Nigeria. Uh, uh, if you want to talk about one Nigeria today, <laughs> sorry, bros. Yeah. If you want to talk about one Nigeria today, yeah. I will tell you that Yibo yeah. should be our next president in one Nigeria. <laughs> if you are talking about one Nigeria, but you know what happened. You can put that on the table. Yeah, yeah, ro yeah. Rotation system. Yeah, the rotation ship. No, okay. It's not going to happen anymore. Yeah, yeah, it, it, People have gone it, past. It, it, but you don't pass that long now, time now, ago. Now, I've got, well, mo sad. I've got a friend, Muta Kilimanjaro, who is a a uh, keen follower of my program and he's uh, been saying here that the Yorubas uh, have Nigeria and it, they can take it to their grave. Nigeria is a grave uh, of dead mindsets. He says something to be done about people's mindsets which in other words goes with education. Maybe that's what, where the problem is. If we have more people in education, people who are, you can sit down and do dialogue. Now it's difficult to do dialogue with people from the north uh, uh, I mean, the educational structure of Nigeria, the way it is, there are more educated people in the south than in the north. Could this be a major problem as well? Uh, the mindset. Uh? How could you sit down with people that are not going to listen to you? <laughs> no, it's a good question. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. would you sit down with people that realize that they don't want to, risk, they don't like education? Yeah, yeah. And we love education, mm -hmm. and education, our, our school have been locked, mm -hmm. and they don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. How could you sit down with them? How could you sit down with people that when you have 10th grade A, and they're not having grade A, mm. and you'll be sitting at the same table, mm. and they, they push them, 
mm. to the people that have the knowledge. Yeah. How would you sit down with them? They don't, they don't have the same knowledge with us. Yeah. Our own knowledge is far different from them. Mm. They just keep on pushing themselves. Look at, look at Nigeria today. Mm. Look at all our health services mm. and tell me their names and bring that Yibo mm. or Yoruba names out of it. Mm. Okay, if we, if we put it out, how do you, how do you see this, this setup as it is? It, it, is it now uh, education as a major issue? Because the, the way I look at it and, uh, from what he says, yeah. it, it, you can't do a dialogue with people who have a different mindset. It's, I well, think this is, this oh, is where well, the problem think, is. Well, look, I think as was mentioned, the mindset mentality is yeah. important. And I yeah. think that transcends whatever... Um, whatever uh, benefits or you know the, the preponderance of education in the south over okay. the north because mm. that was an issue about Nigeria becoming one nation in the first place yeah, yeah, yeah. the wet, the north was fearful that if it joined uh, at the time of independence yeah they would be dominated by the south so they needed some sort of guarantee that they would be the political leadership yeah and certainly um, that would happened after independence they needed to divide the South, and yeah. uh, you know they had a willing person uh, in Azikiwe in, mm. in, in facilitating that. Yeah, yeah. But um, and so, the, but there's that accusation that then the Yorubas would join with the North against mm. the, <coughs> you know, the East. Okay. So, but I think that it's it's about mentality, and this goes beyond education. It's nothing to do you with see, the mindset. It's you see, nothing. You see, mm. we, you speak about Fulani and uh, Hausa and uh, being sort of. It's about one party in the south being more western orientated yeah, yeah. than the north mm. you see we mustn't forget and if in fact it is the fulani who are dominating nigeria look we mustn't forget that they came as part of an empire mm. and uh, to build an empire you don't it's not just illiterate cattlemen who do that okay they are people of a certain mentality yeah so the problem would be with their elites as there is a problem with the elites of the yorubas the Igbos, and other ethnic groups in nigeria mm. so please don't I, I don't think it's we, we should just dismiss the fulani uh, whether there's some sort of evidence that yeah. hausa fulani are trying to maintain this dominance <laughs> because of this fear mm. of the south e economically and educationally yeah, yeah, yeah we mustn't forget that historically that they were in charge of a very large empire and that the people who've become more educated yeah, in yeah. recent times like the the people from the Igbos, yeah um you can you know that they are not as politically savvy mm -hmm. even with the ge generation and uh, four or five okay. of western education mm -hmm. as other ethnic groups are okay. in nigeria yeah, yeah so we need to just start from a, a kind of a neutral perspective all right to see who are the leaders that can be trusted and who are these others that really need to be overthrown? Okay. Whatever their I come, uh, I come ethnicity to, are. I come to a major point and that... Because, major, frankly, yeah. this is a very important point. Yeah, yeah. I, made, I was speaking to a, a historian. He's unfortunately now deceased yeah, yeah. From, from, from the West. Uh, Europe. And he basically told me that, look, basically, the politicians we have in Nigeria today, they're not like in the 1960s. The Awolo Wars, of the West, yeah. the, the uh, Oparas yeah. of the East, they are criminals, literally criminals. Mm. So these are not the sort of people who are going to negotiate uh, properly a national, you, at a national you, you can't sit yeah. or make Nigeria more equitable. You can't country. sit down and negotiate. So the okay. question now is, mm. how do you build mm. a movement? Mm. Okay, starting within your own mm. ethnic constituencies yeah, yeah. but also try and reach out to other parts of Nigeria mm. to forge a unity to change the mentality and the nature of leadership in Nigeria there is a bigger issue here which we tend to overlook uh, mainly uh, as Nigerians not just Nigerians but the rest of Africa and that's the issue of religion if you look at the north it, it the issue has affected Sudan the whole of Sudan before it split up to be southern Sudan and northern Sudan um, it's split up. It's it's affected other areas of, of of Africa. Religion has been a major issue, and Nigeria, where churches are being burnt in in the north and other areas, and also mosques now. Issues that have started affecting the the, the religion has played a major part. Now, Yorubas are going to find that if they are to break away, mo the Muslims who are 
believers of, as well have got to be part of the system of helping the Yorubas. It's uh, similar to the Igbos as well. Something has to happen which has to engulf everybody, whichever religion they come from. Do you see this happening? Well, I mean, you, 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 you can answer that because yeah. in, the, in yes. the north, in the yeah. north, yes, yeah. okay, there is a dominance of Islam. Yeah. But with, with in the, among the European pe people, yeah. you have Christians and Yorubas. I know. Uh, and, and Muslims. Yeah. But, I, uh, the but, Yorubas have got mm. both Muslims and Christians. Mm. Okay. Similarly, the Igbos have got Muslims and Christians. Not although, the major or, although the majority yes. are Christians. Yeah. But I'm looking at it from the angle of whereby saying we, we have a common purpose. That common purpose. Look at South Africa. When Mandela was in prison and all the others, they, nobody bothered whether we, which religion. They had a common cause, and the common cause was apartheid. They fought it. Now, still, Nigeria can come with a common cause. I said, look, we Yoruba people are looking at the structure which is not fair, which is not working. Can we go with the Igbos, regardless of which tribe, which religion, and so on, and make sure that we, we have. Uh, because we have a common enemy. The common, many, the common enemy is the government now. We are moving away from that. Can this be an issue as we go along tomorrow? You see, um, to be honest with you, yeah, yeah. to be really honest with you, yeah. in Southwest, mm -hmm. you haven't got a problem with religion. You don't? You don't. Okay. You see, in Southwest, you could see a Christian mm -hmm. married to a Muslim. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and they live in the same house. We have no problem with them. Mm. It's only the North people, Northerners, that have problem with religion. Even though you want me to say something to you, mm. the Muslim in the North, when they, they don't believe in the Muslim in the Southwest. Okay, okay. They the don't Muslim believe in, in their own the Muslim. Muslim in the Southwest. Yeah, they don't they believe. Call them, they call them one one name. They call them, non believers or something. Non, they call them non believers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we in the Southwest. We, let me tell you something. Yeah. When we are when we are young, we used to celebrate the the, the, the Ilya together, mm. and they celebrate our Christmas together. Yeah, yeah. So we are happy with each other in the southwest. Yeah. It's only in the north people they have a problem with that. Okay, okay. We don't mind. You understand me? I could marry to a Christ Muslim wife yeah. because I'm a Christian. Yeah. We will live together. Yeah. She will go on her own prayer, mm. and I will go on my own prayer, mm. and nothing will happen. Mm. And the same way we respect their mosque, mm. that's the same way they respect our churches. Okay, okay. Well, but I think in those days, 1970s, yes. people yes. used to, neighbors used to, yes. Muslim. Yeah, we, we, we are we, happy together. We got not just Yoruba, but everybody will celebrate Eid El Fitri mm -hmm. or Christmas. We yeah. do we, everything together. We don't have any problem. It's nowadays mm. that they open the border now, mm. and some Muslims are coming inside, yeah, yeah. and they now call it. Do you remember, like, about six months ago? That they stole a Christian girl to death yeah. because he oh, called, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. called yeah. a Muslim yeah. um, something of that. And the people did they bring the people to book? No, they didn't. They didn't because yeah, yeah. that's what the government wants. Yeah, yeah. The government if we don't have problem, mm. is the government is our problem. The people ruling us, they are the people that, that do that's our problem. We mm. under them we have no problem with one another. Mm. But, love, but is there do you see that as an issue now that could join you all together because you have a common purpose? The, the issue because if, if you if you have if you don't have a problem with it, then you can join hands with that's the Muslim. What we do in yeah. Southwest. Hmm? The that's issue that should Southwest. join everybody is poverty, ignorance, and progress. Okay. You know that, that that's what I say a lot of the time on these programs that yeah, I yeah. do with you. Mm. That if you can provide a vision, mm. uh, a, a kind of a ideology universal ideology okay you may start it off in an ethnic context but it has to be universalized that is saying that we want to progress we want independent economic and uh, political structures in africa that is what should be headed to um religion offers nothing in the sense of for instance this sort of profiteering we see mm. among christian evangelist in Nigeria, yeah, 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 yeah. or the fundamentalism of Boko Haram and Islamic State. Yeah. We don't want to be become medieval Arabs yeah, yeah. any more than we want to be the slaves of the Western economic system. Mm. So I would say the common ideology that should 
be focused on. And this is where you need real statesmanship. Okay. I think the, the, the stature of people like Namde Kano, mm. Sunday Iboho, is that they come from, in a sense, the grassroots. They, or at least they have the support of the grassroots people. People can say what they want about uh, either of those two men. But we really need people, and it's not just about having an intellectual. You need thoughtful people like uh, Chief Awolowo was, like um, Dr. Opara was. People with an ideology that is based on progress. And even in those days, people said, you know, that look, so-called tribalism regime could be used as a strength. Mm. You see, I don't like this idea about dividing up into states yeah. and breaking up a country. You make yourself weaker. Yeah, of course, of course. For yeah. African states, for me, mm. the bigger the better. Yeah. And it's not about the bigger can these Africans manage themselves. Well, yes, they damn well can. Yeah. You have the Oyo Empire, you had the Ashanti Empire, mm. you had Songhai. Okay? Yeah. There's no issue about that, but it is about bringing people together with a common universal ideology. And we need statesmen like leaders to do that. Mm. Unfortunately, we don't have them. Yeah. The people who are certainly <laughs> going to run for the elections, <laughs> I, I will <laughs> risk any libel suits. They are criminals. <laughs> they are literally, they, they have nothing to offer Listen, in terms uh, of developing yeah, that yeah. country. Listen, so, I, was, yeah. I, was, I was interviewing um, Alistair. He stood for presidential elections nearly five years ago. And um, I also interviewed one doctor who is also trying to run for president uh, uh, next year as well. Uh, is another doctor, very, very prominent guy here in London. And Alistair and him talked about something which is similar, and that is the fact that um, what the people on the ground see, that they look at, they see, and what people like them who are trying to be leaders of tomorrow with very good visions that you're bringing to the table they don't look at the vision they look at what they have to eat tomorrow they, they, what is where is the next meal going to come from how are they planning all this now what the governments did is to make sure that everybody's below those who are down are down now you're going to come here with your vision of tomorrow of breakaway of this or that they will listen to it but they have to go back home and cook food they have to eat something so poverty is a major issue as you mentioned it uh, that's why someone comes with money. He wins them over, gives them rice or something for a certain period. So that vision hasn't gone into yet. Now, I remember the Ghanaian youth. They were given rice and stuff like that. They rejected it. They gave the, youth the money. They, because the vision, they, they were looking more at vision. They're looking at the employment. It again comes back to what have you put into them. The Ghanaians have put a lot in them that they can even reject food to politicians or even money as tomorrow comes. Now, can Nigeria do that? Because if you're going to pass a vision, you need to take it maybe to the youth to make sure you give them that idea that, listen, I'm not just giving you food. I want more than food. I want you to have jobs. I want you to have this. Because that seems to be the vision which is not existing in Nigeria. You see, what yeah? happened in Nigeria today mm -hmm. is that some people have already buy Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Already buy it. They buy it. They yeah. own it. They own Nigeria. Nigeria on the side. <laughs> nobody will be able to come into that campus. Okay, look at the next uh, uh, the election they are doing now. Yeah, yeah. They brought out Ashiba Joe. Yeah. And they have Tinumbu yeah. in APC with yeah. so many other people. Yeah, yeah. On the election day, the person that have the most money, yeah. which is Tinumbu, that can give them Okay. Um, 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 $100 million, thousand dollars I don't know how much they give, $13,000 yeah. for people to vote for them who won the election. You that have the money, less you can go nowhere. Mm, okay. So the more you have the money, the more you can go to it. You see, we pray... The scourge of Godfathers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so we, everybody, we sit down and say, oh, Tinubu, Tinubu, I don't care. Mm. He ruled ever said for three years, for two tenants, I don't see what he done. In there, I, can't see, I can't tell you that this is. I can sit down today from morning to day to night and tell you uh, when Jack O'Day was Lagos State Governor, yeah. this is what he does. Mm. This is what he does. Mm. Can, can I see what Chinumbu does for Lagos when he's Lagos State Governor? Mm. And he wants to be Nigerian president. <laughs> and we are all pushing him uh, to come to the one to, to become a president. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're coming towards the end of the program and um, uh, uh, the issues. I'm not going to go away. 
we can discuss them, we can go to head, we can do whatever we want to do, but it's going to be difficult. But as the major issue stands, and how do you see both where Yoruba is going to go? Hmm? How do you see where Yoruba is going? Because now we have a big, big problem. If Yoruba goes, which can't be allowed, uh, so will the uh, Igbos. Uh, one or two minutes, one or two seconds so on, on that you issue. See, by we, Yoruba, mm. saying mm. we want our own nation, Yoruba nation, and we want to get out of that country, mm. we have to come together. It's not by fighting mm. or by killing each other. We have to raise our voice, come out with a big rally yeah. all over the world, let the world know that this is what we want. Okay. We, are, we are planning another rally in Nigeria, mm -hmm. which we expect everybody to come out, like the way they came out in Zivera. Yeah. Everybody was there, take over. It will happen mm -hmm. one day in Nigeria. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 Ade. Yeah, well, yeah. To, to sum up, yeah. you've, you've got to get get uh, past the previous, uh, mm. the, the, the stereotypes yeah, yeah. and reach uh, the young people. Mm. Uh, don't keep on bringing up the treacherous Igbo mm. officers who <laughs> murdered other people or uh, the Yorubas who didn't support the Igbos in the civil war or yeah. homicidal oh, so houses. The past, the past should remain, remain in the past. You remember the past, but yeah. you think Make sure about it the remain, future. It you think about mm. what are you going to do who has a vision to develop okay. the country? All right. Uh, I just want to thank both of you for coming. I know it's, it's never easy. Uh, it's never easy, especially when it comes to politics. And But let's see what goes ahead. I just hope that Nigeria doesn't break up. Um, I just want to say thank you very much for viewing us. And I do hope that we'll be together again next week for another edition of Africa Speaks. Thank you very much. And may God bless you all.